Hi there, I'm Keegan Van Hook and welcome to Us As We Are. Behind me, there is a protest forming, a protest to stand up against Oregon white supremacy, houselessness, and child sexual abuse. While broad, this is gonna be a great opportunity, as usual, to talk to some interesting characters and get a scoop for what's going on here and what people think. So, without further ado, come on, let's go. All right, so we're here with Mingpa. We've talked to Mingpa many times, so I think we can skip the introductions. Why don't you, or unless you want to introduce yourself again, you're no, more no, than welcome. I'm good, I'm good. We'll just start so fresh. why don't you just tell us what the plan is for today, sort of what the agenda is and what this is all about. So um, the most important thing is the acknowledgement of the KKK white supremacy that has occurred in Ashland uh, previously because Oregon was dominated by the KKK and white supremacy for over 100 years. Um, not only when the gold diggers came to the West Coast, but also when European colonialization fully took, took, took uh, um, plague spreading here and infected the Shasta and Tekelma and other tribes surrounding this area, as well as um, nine tribes of Oregon and beyond. Um, so there was a massacre in Jacksonville with the Chinese. Uh, and then they bizarrely still celebrate um, Chinese New Year there, even though there's not a lot of Chinese people to live there anymore. There's uh, issues definitely with um, the African community in Oregon and in, in, in uh, Ashland, we have Dead Indian Road and also throughout uh, South Oregon, there's Dead Indian Soda Springs, Dead Indian Creek, like intensely, horrifically disrespectful expressions of uh, hatred from white supremacists so these things need to be removed and we need to address these things jacob blake um fortunately brother i'm glad you survived we're going to be praying for you at the vigil in railroad park in about another hour and a half um we have people praying for us now as we're preparing to march um depending on how many people show us we'll march all over town if not if not as many people show up as they usually do if it's like 50 or less um this is looking like it's about 50 right now actually so we'll probably get the amount and march around the whole town but um with the the main focus one of the main focuses tonight is the jacob blake prayer because um we suspect that some white supremacists took down the shirts in fact um from what i hear white supremacists actually did take down the t-shirts this past saturday night or sunday night um from the vigil where the shirts had the names of the police victims of 2020 um I mean the um, victims of police violence in 2020. So it got replaced and repaired rather quickly and abruptly, but I want to solidify that power within the community. So not only do we want to solidify that, we also want to um, stand up for children's sexual assault. Uh, people don't know, but there's been pedophilia happening in Ashland. I actually tried to run a pedoph pedophile out of town in, um, in autumn, and he's still here, you know? So in the next coming months, we're going to start exposing these people. And also, um, we're marching against Ordinance 3189. I have a question. So do you know about the pedophile that's running rampant right now in Grants Pass? No, I don't. There's a guy that, um, that runs House of a Thousand Colors in Grants Pass. And also, <laughs> there's also been the attacks on Rogue River. You remember the Evans uh, Creek? Yeah, definitely. I think you should feel more focused on him because I just asked him a question, so I don't want to take your silence. Okay. So from there, you're going to go to the railroad district, and then it says on your poster there's something to do with the Hardesty property tonight? Uh, we're going to actually just finished um, making a, um, uh, like a pamphlet for people to sign so we can have a council related on occupying uh, land for the functional homeless in Ashland. This is to get gain attention for that so we can start to have a really serious conversation about it. Gotcha. And then the next March, we'll actually do something. Interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add about your plans or intentions? Um, just uh, Jacob Blake, please get well soon. And to all the to all, uh, um, melanated people and just in general, in general, the people who are uh, suffering from the victimization upon our own people, not just uh, brown people, but everybody. Um, we're going to overcome this, and uh, that's why I'm out here. Namaste. All right, Ming Pa, thanks a lot as always. Yeah. yeah.
So I think we've talked to you before, but why don't you just reintroduce yourself? Yeah, uh, my name's Kyle. I've been a, a resident of Ashland for the last about 10, 10 years or so. I moved up here as a student and just kind of stuck around. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> same with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why are you out here today? Uh, I'm just here to show that people actually care. And I mean, I don't know. I, I think that there, there's a lot more that needs to be done than just being out here and uh, standing out here with a sign. But I also think that uh, that showing up when people ask you to show up is important too. Very cool. And what do you think should be done? I, I guess first, what problems do you care about and, and how do you see our society coming to grips and, with and fixing those problems? I mean, that's, that's a really big problem. That's a big question. I don't, I don't know if we have enough time to tackle that, but I mean, really just as far as, I'll, I'll say in so far as much as my, why I think it's important to support, um, you know, anti-racist movements as far as the, the larger problems that we're facing. But uh, I think that, that there is, you know, there are obviously layers of oppressive structures, um, you know, the predominant oppressive structure be, being white people, I mean, rich people, really. But then I think within that, whiteness is an, another layer of oppression. And um, I think that we as white people who are working class white people who are also, you know, uh, under certain oppressive structures need to stand up for people who are... Um, who are facing more oppressive structures than we are. And that the, the liberation of um, black people, indigenous people, people of color, all, all sorts of marginalized and oppressed people. If we as working class white people stand up for those people and elevate their voices and, you know, elevate them just as people and this, insofar as they, they need rights and someone to stand up for them, I think that it will elevate all of us and it will, that's, that's the only true way we can end the, the overarching power structure in America is to elevate everyone. And us that, that have a voice and are still oppressed need to stand up for those people whose voices are being silenced. Very good, thanks so much for talking to us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so to start, why don't you just introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Torin McKnight. And, um, yeah. Well, yeah. And uh, so what brings you out here today? Um, I'm here just to protest for Black Lives Matter because um, there's a huge issue with white supremacy. I mean, in our nation as a whole, but also especially in the Rogue Valley um, and the rise of like far right groups and stuff. And we need to show our support. Otherwise, we'll just kind of get drowned out. I see you have a, a camera on you. Are you worried about something going down tonight? Uh, I mean, I, I just want to be prepared at uh, protest because, I mean, a few, few weeks ago, like, we were surrounded by white supremacists with guns and stuff, and um, they were, like, constantly threatening us, harassing us, trying to start fights. Um, and so I just want to be prepared for anything that could happen. For sure. Uh, the divide has definitely gotten pretty big yeah. uh, around these kinds of issues. Uh, how do you feel about people who are not in support of the same agendas and movements that you are, and, and uh, how do you see a way to sort of reconcile those differences? Um, I mean, I certainly hope that everyone can at some point come to an agreement that, I mean, at the very least, that black lives matter, if not that black lives should be protected. Um, but I honestly, I'm not hopeful that that's going to happen with a lot of people because the white supremacy and just white privilege is so ingrained in so many people here that I'm not confident that's going to happen on a wide scale, but all we can do is try. And so then where does... Well, We'll wait for it to quiet down. <laughs> um, okay, so from there, then, what do you think uh, our society needs to do to sort of evolve and mend the issues that you see in it? Um, I, well, I think the most important thing right now is to defund, and, if not abolish, the police. Um, I think we do need some sort of alternative to the police, but the current system we have simply isn't working because it's killing people, but also especially um, minorities and people of color. Um, even more. So we need to do that and uh, invest in more mental health uh, work, social workers to deal with situations. Um, and then we need to educate people from an early age about um, stopping white supremacy and um, learning to get rid of our implicit bias. Hold on. Well, thanks so much for talking to us. I think we're going to go catch what Ming Pa's got to say. Thanks a lot. Yeah. To hide it and to protect our children and our seven generations.
generation. All right, so we've seen a lot of your uh, Facebook videos in the past, and we've also definitely gotten you on video before, but I don't think we've ever spoken with you ourselves. So could you just introduce yourselves to us? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, can I? It's so hard. Clarence Carr. Uh, just a person. I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm just somebody who I've been through a lot. Uh, I come from a dark place. Uh, I know I've seen the worst of the worst. Uh, like... I probably seen more than most of our vets than seen. Um, I mean, I've seen a lot. <laughs> so it's just like, uh, I know that's not what black represents, what black people represent. That's not what my grandma's and all the real hard lessons I refused as a kid to learn. That's not what they taught me. They taught me that we were peaceful. We're supposed to love our brothers. We're supposed to lift our brothers up. We're supposed to be that light that we want our brothers to draw to, not force upon them. And that's just it. I feel until we all have real freedom, until we can all choose the path of life that we want in life, and as long as it doesn't harm another human being. So, like, whatever your path is, as long as it doesn't harm someone else, then nobody should restrict that. And <clears throat> I believe that's why we're all lost people. It's because we're all then been restricted and told who we're going to be and what we're going to be. And that's just like right now. You see the biracial mixed groups of people out here fighting for Black Lives Matters because they want their life to matter. You know what I mean? And that's just the truth of it. So it's like, I love it, man. I met the most beautiful people here. Like, a lot of people call them low lives and a lot of other stuff. There is some people out here with a lot of anger, a lot of aggression and they just haven't been taught what to do with it. I had the unfortunate teachings of how to control my anger. So, uh, I don't know, it becomes beautiful. I'd be trying to help, I, that's what I want to do. I said, ask him what might be my last protest because it's, to me, to end supremacy, I just posted this on my Facebook. To end supremacy, it's like, if I knew every time I sat down at the table to play you in chess, I know you already got the game rigged and you're going to whoop my ass in this game every time. The only way for me to win is to refuse to play you. Then I win. Because there is no winner of this game. I'm just choosing my way in life. And it's just to not be a winner or a loser. Just live. So you think this is going to be your last protest? It might be because I figure as people, if we could come together with a collective mind and create our own peaceful sanctuary, then we wouldn't have to deal with supremacy. You could be that light and allow it to draw all the other things that you want in it. It creates a non-government regulated utopia where, I mean, if you get people there built off the right principles, the right morals, the right ethics, and they come there with that type of mindset and that type of standard, you don't have to fall for this supremacy because believe it or not, supremacy to me comes in all colors. It comes in a form of where one thinks they need money or a status in life or something like that to be above somebody. Like out here, I done met teachers, I've met doctors, I met everybody. That tells you all of those people are willing to come to, ooh, sorry, willing to come to a table and say that they're all equal. That's already a community. Now all they got to do is learn how to come together and finish building on that and supremacy erase itself because you got to think financially, you're taking from that institute. Uh, you're teaching people how to be more free, more developing with their minds, more open with their minds to develop more things with everything. There's no regulation. You just got to find a big, enough, a big enough spot 
and enough people to dedicate themselves to that. Because you can't fight hatred with hatred. We're all out here right now with our anger and our passion. It's not directed nowhere. It's not going nowhere. It's for centuries we've done this. To have a revolution I mean it has to be changed. So I mean I just want to see people push for a real revolution, for a real change. And the revolution starts with the people sitting in the house that are tired of the same system, the same systematic way, and they want a fresh start. And so I mean they don't have to come out and protest. We just have to put our collective minds together to create a utopia. So with this potentially potentially being your last protest, what are your goals for today slash tonight? I don't know. I really came out here to support this brother that uh, I come out and support everybody. Ming Pa? Uh, all of my complaints have been with Medford PD. I've been trying to get people to like say something to him, do something. I left my Facebook wide open because a lot of people say we're white allies. We're allies. Let, how can we help? What can we do? The stories are out there. Why aren't you harassing the police departments about why, why this story is true? How does he got him on film confessing these stories? It's like, how does he got the people that assaulted him and all the people that were there agreeing that this is all true and nobody's doing nothing? That's why I did it. And I figure if people aren't willing to step up to the plateau to really help and do something, then I'm wasting my breath and I'm wasting my time. Then I need to move on to something different. What kinds of sorry? What, what kinds of activities would be, in your view, like helpful and actually forward goals instead of, uh, as you said, just sort of reflect anger? Create a safe atmosphere for victimized people by the police to come out and start speaking against them. Create a team of people that would be willing to go up and challenge those accusations against the police department. You create a team like that, all of their dark secrets will start pouring out. So, um, what else I think you should do? People need to start showing why they don't need the police officers. People need to start like feeding their community. People need to start that free choice. Start a, you can never control drug addiction because it's a self choice. Uh, most addicts can't recover because they can't understand why it's so bad for them to do something to their self. So after they fight that whole psyche, it's hard to kind of recover. So addiction really is something that you're going to battle until you give them a safe place to realize that they don't need that, and, but they could go there if they need to escape, but then they can start living a normal life and back into reality. And I mean, there's a lot we could do as people, man. <laughs> All we got to do is try, man. Uh, the people that didn't help me love me at my worst time. That's how I recovered. That's why I'm out here loving people at their worst time, their best time, whatever. That's what we do. You don't wait like uh, I had a brother say, well, Clarence, maybe God's calling you to, you know, die or whatever because you won't quit fighting with these people, you know, or whatever. And I was like, well, if that's what it takes for you guys to stand up, then I don't want you to stand up then because then it's too late. I don't get to enjoy my life. It was pointless. What do I want you to stand up for then? You know, I want you to stand up now and change our atmosphere, change our lives for our kids. But the reality is it's a set group that wants that. Everybody else is comfortable. So the only way to really win is to separate it all. And that's just separating good and evil. Well, Clarence, thanks a lot for talking to us. <laughs> all right. You're welcome, man. So to start, how about you just introduce yourself? My name is Sylvia. I'm from L.A. And I'm visiting here. And this is, uh, it was surprising for me to see this today, and I'm very proud of everybody out here to do what's necessary at this time. So you're from LA, that's a pretty big town. What do you think of the fact that we have uh, this number of people gathered here in such a small place? Oh, I'm ecstatic about it. I actually was here, I don't know, two, three months ago, and we also joined another protest, and I'm all about it. It's much needed right now, so people need to open their eyes. Right on. And, uh, Will, do you think you might take part in this one tonight? I mean, we're chanting here. <laughs> um, I have to uh, be conscious of being around a lot of people, so. But yes, in, in spirit, and I'm here, and we're chanting, so yes, we support them, 100%. Right. right on. Thanks so much for talking to us. Yeah. I'm in 10 years for Julie Akins because she's a person who stands by the people. And I want to send out a prayer for her husband, Leo, who's in the hospital right now. 
And I want to send out a prayer for Jacob Blake. I want to send out a prayer for Brianna Taylor. And I want to send out a prayer for my brother Ming Paul right here, who's still alive. This is a life that we need to support. This is a brother that we need to listen to. I'm not here to steal the limelight. I'm here to stand by my friend and protect him. Walk next to him. As an Iraq vet, I am not a person who is afraid to put his life on the line for his community. Not then, not now. I'm an Iraq veteran who's against the war then, and I'm against the war now. We want a nonviolent protest. If you're here for violence, please go home. If you're here as a counter protester, please go home. There's no room in Ashland for racism. There's no room in Ashland for hatred. This is a movement of love. And love is the strongest force in the universe. It is the most powerful force in the universe. It will overcome all the hatred. After this protest, we're going to be throwing barbecues. We're going to be feeding people. We're going to be out here in the streets feeding the homeless, feeding the hungry, feeding everyone. We're going to come together in peaceful barbecues, family barbecues like they had in Rogue River, the ones that were canceled by the white supremacists. All they wanted to do was have a peaceful family barbecue. And the white supremacists almost outnumbered the people across the street for black lives. Not here in Ashland, not here in Southern Oregon, not anywhere in this world will the supremacists outnumber us, will hate outnumber love. Because I see a lot of people with a lot of hearts, and I know your heart is stronger. I know your love is stronger than their hate. And if there is a white supremacist listening to me right now, I want to say I love you. And I think you are better than your brainwashed beliefs. It's time to switch sides. What are you proud of, white supremacist? Are you proud that you came and stole this land? Are you proud that you raped, that you committed genocide? Are you proud of that? What do you have to be proud of? We are proud of our love. We have a strong love. We have a stronger love than your hate could ever be. And I want to pass the mic over to my friend right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's been a rough week with all the deaths that have happened. Uh, I'm very happy and very um, compassionately embraced by the actions not only of African people, but also of uh, many Latino, First Nations, uh, European, uh, Asian, all sorts of people in this country who have stood up. I'm, I'm very happy with African people and uh, the total boycotting that has gone on in the sports world recently. Uh, I definitely give props to um, Doc Rivers for what he caused and ignited with the Milwaukee Bucks. I definitely give props to the WNBA. Definitely give props to the NFL players, uh, Colin Kaepernick especially. I definitely give props to not only um, Naomi Osaka, who also boycotted but also to even the PGA who supported their golfers boycotting. And to all the people who continue to boycott this white supremacist system, as well as people who continue to march in the streets so that our children do not get sexually trafficked or assaulted anymore. And also, thank you to Julie Akins and uh, get well soon to Leo for uh, opposing this Ordinance 3189 that wrongfully pulls people over for no reason and, for, and continues to support and continue this disgusting legacy of white supremacy in Ashland. It brings it to a closure. Us marching, us standing brings it to an end. Realize you're not here for no reason. Realize that more will join us and that the torch that you carry is very important. It's vital. And as we carry those vital torches, let us pray, let us meditate together, let us come together and create community and change this community and make it into what it needs to become. This is a song that brought me to tears. I listened to this about 10 times today because if we aren't willing to say their names, at least we can hear them. One second. Use their pockets anymore. 
going to call for a moment of silence after saying that we need more people out here. We need more people who are going to wake up, speak up, and stand by their friends and defend black lives. I just want to have a moment of silence for Ahmed Arbery and for Breonna Taylor, for Jacob Blake, for George Floyd, and for a whole list of names that we're about to march to. And we're going to say their names down at Railroad Park. But right now, I just want to have a moment of silence for all of them. We're going to take to the streets in five minutes before we do. Uh, we're going <coughs> to rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman, the Black Panther. And um, get well soon, Jacob Blake. <clears throat> if you all would join in on this chant, this chant is to help people pass through the Bardo states so that they reincarnate safely. This chant is also to bring peace and harmony and protection to those who stand for virtue. <clears throat> Om Mane Padme Hum. Mane Padme Ham Om Mane Padme Om Mane Padme Ham Mame Pame Oh Mame Pame Give yourself a, a round of applause, please. For those, for those who don't know, I'm an Unsui. An Unsui is an itinerant monk in the Zen tradition. I started off at San Francisco Zen Center, and then I traveled around the country, came up here, and now I have a, a Mivi Sangha, a Sangha that I started at the Unitarian Universalist Church here in town. It's uh, specialized to make a special place for uh, African... Uh, indigenous people and European abolitionists to come together, meditate, and practice Dharma in a safe environment. <clears throat> we're going to have a couple more speakers and then we're going to take to the streets. I just made a post on Facebook and I refuse to retract it too. <clears throat> this is what I mean by black lives. Uh, I've been speaking out very openly about Ashland police. I've been speaking openly about everything. I'm watching a brother stand up here, and he has no idea what I'm going to say, but he's up here speaking out for Julie Akins. Now, somebody, an ally of mine, told me to reach out to this lady and tell her my situation and see how she would respond. The response I got has me so outraged right now because she told me to go hide. She told me to go hide, to like basically disappear and make myself anonymous. Now that's somebody who's supposed to be running to correct this city and change it. You do not tell somebody to hide, you investigate it. You dig into it. You do your work. There is a brother out here standing for this white life with her name across his mouth and everything else because he wants the right things done. But yet, here it is, a black man went to her and she's not doing the right things. She didn't do the right things. When somebody told me, another brother gave me the best advice as he sat up there on this truck when I was standing right here. He said, when you see something not right, the godly thing to do is to stand in the way. So that's what I'm doing right here. I didn't even know what I was doing up here until this moment right here. So as a black man, I'm standing in the way and telling you guys, you guys better find somebody else to elect if you want real change. 
<clears throat> and for those that like to sit over there in silence and drink their wine and think that this shit don't affect their community, not you, sweetie, just anybody that does. <laughs> See, we, when we personalize it, that means it kind of reflects to us and we do understand. So supremacy, in my mind, is something that every nationality needs to come up out of. Supremacy, in my mind, is when you take a dollar and let it stand for the standard of you and another human being. When that dollar separates you from thinking that you're the same as somebody else. That's the only difference. To me, that is the true supremacy. That's what they fight for, for a dollar. They fight for not to lose their 401k. They fight for all of the extra perks and kicks that they get. So that's the true supremacy that we need to fight because that dollar builds all the hatred. How many families have been torn down over a dollar? How many people have turned their backs on people over a dollar. That's how supremacy is built. It's built off a dollar because it is the number one leading to separation. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I always hear about people talking about peace and love and all of this. Peace and love is when you see somebody else's weak point and you pick it up and you stand up and you give them the hand to get where they need to go. Uh, I've been doing a lot of community feeds for like two weeks straight in Mefford. You know, the police harassed me so bad today that I couldn't even go do it. Like basically the dude flew down a one-way street like this and pulled me over down here. When he jumped out of his car, I jumped out with my camera talking about, hey, you went down a one-way, what are you doing? He was like, I know, I know, but, and like, there ain't no but, you wrong. Like you're sitting there waiting for me to stop me and fuck with me. That's where your silence is wrong. When you guys start seeing that, I air it on Facebook all the time. How are you guys still letting your officers get away with that? You know, everybody always asks me, Clarence, how can I be an ally to you? I don't know, how can you be an ally to me? You don't see them tear my ass up? My family don't even want me at their house because the police sit there all day. Like, literally. And then they say, oh, well, we don't got none in Ashland. Vanderlips. I just released his address all online. How did I get that? Vanderlips stuff is all tied in in my criminal records. So, I'm just saying this. You guys need to start looking into the people that you then gave power to. The people that you put there. Because some of them really aren't here but to do nothing but abuse the system. Start looking back into your city councils. How many of them got child abuse charges? How many of them got child sex charges? A lot. You can't blame that on the low life. I blame that on the rich people that put them there. Yeah. 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 Woo. Mayor Because guess what? They never listen to us. <laughs> That's what I love about being a nobody. Because when you're nobody, you actually give a fuck about everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah! You see how they drink their drinks and they ate. That's what silence. You see them over there, how they turn their heads, they drink their drinks, they put their hands on their head. Not you two ladies, I'm talking about the other ones. <laughs> That's so they can try to ignore it. That is the true white silence. That is the silence all across America. Because all these politician people that we complain about, they put them there. All the people that are treating us like shit, they put them there. Like, so that's what we need to start doing. Everybody likes to dog on me because I do have a little past. But guess what? I'm very transparent about it. I bet you your politicians ain't. That's what you need. Start making them be very transparent. Do not allow them to live in the shadows. They are the representation of your whole entire community. So, I'm telling you right now, until that lady do something for me, because I done reached out to her, she is not good for the black community. So if you white people want her, you guys can vote for her. But for African American people who want real change, she's not for it. Because what did she do? The same thing all the American government people do. She tried to kick it underneath the rug and cover it up. If you fight for black lives, that's the last thing you need to do, Akins. There you go. Sorry to put her on blast. Why are you so sorry? I want to second what he said about Julie Akins, and I want to make sure that you know that I don't wear this mask like this. I don't just blindly follow somebody, and I will deliver that message to her personally. And there's a lot of things that a lot of politicians will promise that they will do, but we want to see you step up and defend black lives. We want you to show up. Speak out. Don't hide the videos of your speeches. Be here now.
I also want to put a couple people, I don't want to say on blast, but I want to call a few people out who just need to clean up their act. First and foremost, Officer Carpenter, stop harassing homeless people. I'll warn you a second time. I already warned you the first time. The people here don't appreciate that. We don't appreciate it. No, we're not going to respond to violence. You definitely win. You're armed to the teeth. What we're going to do is speak out against you, Carpenter. Clean up your act. Julie Aikens, clean up your act. City Hall, clean up your act. The white supremacists who won this town, clean up your act. Elks Lodge, clean up your act. Real estate agents who are gentrifying this town, clean up your act. Yeah. Stand with us. Don't fight against us. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Black Lives Matter. 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 behind me but I just want to give a shout out to one name that stopped me dead in my tracks now as I said my name is Tobiah Tillman and when I was walking down this this gate this monument this this adorable beautiful love the sign of love like the whole community came together to rebuild this after it was torn down by racist white supremacists who wanted to destroy our love but we came back. There used to be spaces in between these t-shirts when I was walking by them. There's almost not a single bla uh, blank space on the whole gate right now because of how much love, how much restoration that this community has banded together and brought to Ashland. 
And I was walking by one t-shirt and it stopped me dead in my tracks because it said Willie Tillman. And I had to stop and think about my heritage. My dad's name is Bill Tillman. People used to call him Willie. Now if my last name is Tillman, and Willie Tillman's last name is Tillman, how did that happen? Well, I was in Tillman's Corner in Mobile, Alabama, and I was walking down the street, and this young man walked up to me, and he said, hey, man, what you doing in this neighborhood? And I said, I'm working. I live in the house down the street. We're doing uh, tree work because of the, the storms that have passed through. And he looked at me and he said, what's your name, man? And I said, my name's Tobiah Tillman. And he said, my name is Curtis Tillman. And I said, oh, wow. He said, do you know where you are, brother? And I said, uh, Mobile, Alabama. He said, you're on Tillman's Corner. And if you Google map Tillman's Corner in Mobile, Alabama, it's a real neighborhood. He said, you know why this neighborhood is called Tillman's Corner? Because there's a plantation here way back in the day run by the Tillmans. He's like, my last name's Tillman, too. And I burst into tears. And I said, I'm sorry. He said, you don't have to be sorry. You just have to change. I want to open it up to prayer now. Uh, Jacob Blake was is still in the hospital. And uh, unfortunately, the Klan and the cops go so hand in hand that he was handcuffed to the hospital bed when he was brought into the hospital. That's how racist this country is. That's how racist the police force is. That's how genocidal their behavior is. That someone who protected two women from beating each other up, gets shot in the back seven times after being tased, and then handcuffed to a hospital bed. Fortunately, he survived. Because the brother Kizzy did not survive. Breonna Taylor did not survive. George Floyd did not survive. The other victims did not survive. This one for us is important because he's actually still alive. In unison, let's chant, we shall overcome today. And Jacob Blake, this is for you. The energy to overcome. The energy to overdo. The energy to overwhelm. The energy to fully rejuvenate. We're offering this up to you now, brother. This is to rejuvenate you while you're in that hospital bed. We shall overcome. Join me. We shall overcome. We shall overcome today. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome today. Keep going. Oh, deep. Okay. Namaste, namaste. Namaste, namaste. Namaste. I just want to say that uh, if you don't believe that cops are racist, I'll just share one more story. When I was walking home one day with my two friends, Anthony and Leonard, we were headed back to the villa, headed back to the projects together. The cops pulled us over, the three of us. One white boy, two black kids. And my friend Anthony got his head kicked in. My friend Leonard did not survive. When they arrested Anthony, I put my hands out, thinking I was going to get arrested too. We had just done the same vandalism together. They had caught us red-handed. We had just wrote, best friends for life. <laughs> that was it. Best friends for life. And you know what they said to me? Walk home, white boy. And they made me walk home. And I walked home the whole time and I was wondering, why me? Why did they tell me to walk home and they beat my friend and they killed my other friend? Does racism exist? Yes, it does. 
And I'm not out here just to toot my own horn or to share my own stories. I want to hear all your stories. I want to have all y'all sign this email list that we got over here on this rainbow flag. I want y'all to put your names down. Sign on the dotted line, whatever you got to do. If you want more info, there's going to be more barbecues. There's going to be more marches. There's going to be more action taken. This isn't the end. This is just the beginning. So here by the rainbow, uh, I'd like for people to come up. We have uh, a council that we're creating to give the homeless, the functional homeless, occupied land here because there's some occupied land that Julie Akins has mentioned that some other people have mentioned that are in Ashland that would correct the homeless issues that we have. So you have a blue marker and this green, uh, this green pamphlet where you put your name, your email, your phone number, or just your name and email or Instagram or whatever. Uh, please, people come up and sign uh, right before we march. We're going to march, start marching again in another five minutes. But this is here for anyone who would like to be on the council for us to talk about how to occupy land so that we can be able to make sure that the functional homeless have a place, particularly people who are, are, have had a hard life and are able to take care of an established community, as well as uh, people who are victims of COVID and so on and so forth. There are different varieties of homeless. We want to make sure that we create a space for that to be solid and not to have them wandering and being victimized. Underserved populations deserve to be served. Correct. <laughs> Underserved populations deserve to be served. Time to serve. Time to serve. <laughs> Time to serve, everybody. We gotta take care of our community. Um, so over a year I've been homeless and during my two months of times of being homeless, I was living under um, a beautiful POC black woman named Sequoia who's like a second mom to me and she was overtaken by the power of drugs, methamphetamines. And I pray for her every night because she used to be like the sweetest, coolest person and you know what fucking sucks? Portland fucking hospitals, they are racist as fuck. It makes me disgusting because this woman needs heart surgery, a rehab plan, and guess what? The state of Oregon can pay for that. But guess what? They give it to little Jared over there who did a coke overdose with his daddy's money. And I'm fucking sick of seeing my city being gentrified. Fuck that. I'm sick of seeing Medford gentrified. Did you know right now there are more homeless people out on the streets? I see them every day asking for water. Guess what? I even make them food. I don't care. I don't care if I get fired anymore for serving my country, my city, my state, my community. Yes. yes. I am sick of yes. homelessness and racism all yes. across Southern Oregon. And guess what? I got family roots in the KKK. But you know what I say to that? Fuck the KKK. Fuck Trump. Fuck Kate Brown. Because guess what? Kate Brown doesn't care about us. She cares about her golden dollar by the end of the day. And that's all I gotta say because I love this community and I stand up for my bi POC friends, my bi POC community, and I stand for the queer community that was started by Black Trans Lives. So, Trans Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Also, also guys, guess what? A thousand colors and grants pass is run for a pedophile? So let's bomb it! Let's get petitions started to get him out of our city! Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Thank you. That's my first time ever speaking. You did a good job. You did a good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay, so for those of you who know me, you already know I'm about to say something that they ain't gonna like. Can't wait. Because <laughs> for the for the past like month or so. Every time I've talked to someone on the opposite side, we've agreed on some things. We haven't agreed on certain things, but the one thing that we don't agree on is the one thing that really makes me mad. Which is? Excuse me. Couldn't breathe with that damn thing on. I'm sorry. But every time I talk to them, they're like, why don't you just say Black Lives Matter? Why not just Lives Matters? Simple. <laughs> that is quite literally the only way we can stop them from stealing our shit, like they've done with our music, mm. our culture, Correct. our children, our women, our men, Correct. our Correct. music. I'm real mad Correct. about the music one. 
But y'all get what I'm saying. They come and take anything that black people start. Prime example, the cotton gin. Exactly. Wait, this hold up, hold up. was built on the backs of blacks. Yes. How many here actually know about the cotton gin scandal? Raise your hand. I do not. I do. Okay, a few of you, a few of you know about the cotton gin scandal. So, I'll briefly educate the rest of you on what I'm talking about when I say the cotton gin. The cotton gin was an invention created by a slave, so they didn't have to pick through the cotton and pick out all the seeds. They made a little device that they can just stick it in, roll it, and it picks out the seeds for them. Oh, they patented it? White man patented it. He didn't let his he didn't let his slave patent it. He was like, oh, that's a great idea. But but since it was the slave's idea, the master got the, the master patent because it was his property. Capitalism. Exactly, capitalism. And that's why I'm really mad because they're sitting here trying to find ways to take our movement and make it about them. Motherfucker, it's not about you this time. Correct. I'm gonna keep screaming Black Lives Matter because it's about I you. fucking matter. That's and right. And I'm black. You and I'm matter. proud of that fucking fact. I'm focused on yes. you. you it's about so, you. So, next time someone comes up to any of y'all and go, why do they say Black Lives Matter? Simple. Look at them and be like, that's the only way they can stop people from stealing their fucking movement. Correct. That's all I got to say on that subject. Yes. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who has been in the park, particularly those who marched, as well as those in the background that have supported us. If you'd like to join us, we're about to march in these streets in the next 20 seconds. Uh, thank you everybody for coming to this vigil. This is really important. We need to solidify our presence here on a monthly basis, if not on a daily basis, to make these white supremacist clowns in the background know that this will not be tolerated. We will not tolerate our vigil being destroyed or tampered with. The, the, the vigil's not going away. It's not going away for a long time. You're not going away. I and also, and also, if it gets to the point that I gotta rename this Black Panther Garden Park to keep this vigil, then so be it. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Are y'all with us? Yeah. Are y'all with us? Yeah. Then let's march. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. is probably a little controversial thing as an Iraq vet. I think that's one reason why the chief of police called me into a meeting the other day and asked me if we needed protection from white supremacists. Speak louder, brother. And the biggest thing is that my brother, Deputy Tillman, uh, Deputy Sheriff in Lynchburg, Virginia, would probably be a little bit pissed off when he sees this live Facebook video. But I just want to say to him, remember your oath. Remember your oath. There was a man, a veteran in Portland, Oregon, who took to the streets because he was fed up with the feds. He said, get the feds out of Portland. Do you know what you have done? You've pepper sprayed a whole line of pregnant women. When that was happening, when that was happening, my wife was pregnant. And that whole line of pregnant women in Portland, Oregon got pepper sprayed. Our love is stronger than your hate, brother. We know that you are better than your brainwashed belief.
we can't do for ourselves. Yeah. They are endangering Absolutely. black lives. They are taking black lives. When vigilantes take to the streets, our president defends them as if they are heroes. I feel sorry for their parents of that child. No, I actually don't. I don't even feel sorry for that child who's facing life imprisonment. That kid doesn't have a chance to live now. Rittenhouse, oh my goodness. That is just one travesty. Every day we're adding to the list. This has got to stop. We have got to speak out. White people, stop being silent. Stop being silent. It's not an option. Come out of your house. Those of you who stayed home, those of you who are partying in the park, take to the streets. Defend your black friends. It's one thing to put a Black Lives Matter sign in your front yard. It's another thing to put your life on the line as you walk next to your black friend as he demonstrates against the racism that's so rampant. Oh! Grants pass, your day is over. Rogue River, your day is over. Ashland, your day is over. The rent is too damn high. 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 There's a lot of gentrification going on in this neighborhood. And I just want to say one thing, white boys. What are you so proud of? You have came to this country. You raped. You committed genocide. Your power is over. It is dismantled. White supremacy is a thing of the past. Black lives matter today, and they still matter tomorrow. The color run? The color don't run here, okay? The color doesn't bleed here, all right? This is a peaceful demonstration of nonviolence. Ignorance and racism goes that way. Thank you. Brother of no color. That's what you gotta be. Brothers of no color and sisters of no color. Say his name! Jacob Blake! Say her name! Brianna Taylor! Say his name! Jacob Blake! Say her name! Brianna Taylor! Say his name! Jacob Blake! Say her name! Brianna Taylor! Say his name! Jacob Blake! Say her name! Brianna Taylor! Yeah. So what? Because they're brothers of no color. What brings you out here today? I lived on the street, but the thing is, uh, they're talking about, they're, they're making it more racist than anything, but talking about white and all this and, and, and the defamation. Look at that brown dog. Brown dog. They're, 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 they're you know, just everybody embrace everybody go forward and not backwards. It's retarded. They have no idea what they're fucking doing. I appreciate your heart and where you're coming uh, from. Like, I hear but, your but heart, I'm, I'm but like, there's more, baby. There's more. Yeah, I appreciate but, your heart and where you're coming from. We're not going to be blind to color. Okay, color is beautiful. They, they said, and it, they said dad, it today. When my dad right goes there. to get a job and they say, fire that, fire that Mexican and hire the white guy, he's got color and that's something that's great that yeah, you but think. But I want you to ever, see but, color. But, I want you to see my but, color. Uh, sister Sledge, but the Sister Sledge, you are empowered to be as good as you are, and I love these fuckers. Thank I you. love you, fuckers. Well, yeah, not so God much bless to me. You guys. Thank you. Thank you. Peace on you. Oh, Thank you for resting my body and pulling her hair. You guys are the best. Thank you for supporting them. And taking my kid by the hair. Thank you. And if you got daughters getting raped, who are you going to call? Who are you going to call when you're getting burglarized? Who are you going to call? Your Black Lives Flag members? No. You're going to call the police. God bless the police. You're going to call them when your daughter's getting raped. Or, I swear to God, like they'd have no... Uh, thank you. We love you. They, th these people are idiots. They're fucking idiots. And I love you, and I love everybody, but I love... That they they have no idea. Peace. Why? Peace on the police. Peace, baby. Who are they gonna call when they're busted, right? So you would say you're not a uh, defund the police or a Black Lives no, Matter? No, no, it's just like support. Be inclusive. Everybody should be inclusive. Like it's just like it. They're 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 going. These people are going backwards. 
Do you believe that there's any stock in the claims that the police are brutal? Oh yeah, there's bad police and there's, there's good police and bad police. I swear to God, there's like and there's good truck drivers and bad truck drivers and good moms and bad moms. But like, to uh, look at Chicago, nobody talks about Chicago. Why don't you guys take your fucking microphone and look at with the violence in Chicago, black on black? Why don't you go on black on black and then you did then then you go and let's say okay. This is heavy. Well, yeah, do you know what's going on in Chicago? No, and it might be a bit of an expensive plane ticket for me, but um. No, do, just look at. I mean, it's insane. It's insane. It's insane, and it's like these patty cake people coming here, and I'm like, oh, oh, my God. Look so at if this. you, if this is not I'm the. Chicago, because I just moved here from there. Yeah, but like it's insane. It's insane. Who's, who's like Chicago. I literally just left there two months ago. Whatever, but like, uh, I... Oh, no, no, no. What were you saying about Chicago? Oh, my God, like, South Side, like, the, 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 uh, the, the shootings, black on black, and nobody talks about black on black. Oh, everybody talks about it. The black oh, community no, no. talks Not about media. it all the time. Not media. Do you ever see we black on black? Do you ever see black on black on the media? Uh, you ever yeah, see, you talk, you we gotta, talk about you it all the time. You go to CNN. Do you want to talk about statistics? No, 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 no. Do you want to talk you, about... You, no, you no, go no. on any media, forward, no, CNN, nothing, black on black. No, same race on race crime is pretty equal among the races. No, 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 no. White on white. No, it's brown on brown, black on black. Insane. Men on statistics. women. Insane. The statistics insane. are there. Nobody. It's, it's and it's I just came from driven, Chicago. There's some driven, shootings, but you want to. And you guys it. like media driven, and you got like you. Well, you Chicago rap because I lived in the hot spot. Whatever. I live in this area called. Cape Let's Town. move to with the protest. Go get on, get on. I love you guys. Yeah. My eyes, they bleed from my heart. Now that that's talked to you, I see not all black people are the same. Is there any way you can forgive me? So first to start, why don't you just introduce yourself? My name is Daniel Cornette. Everyone calls me Danny Boy. And what brings you out here today? I'm out here because of police brutality, plain and simple. And yes, there is racism, but more than anything, it's a uh, war against poverty. And I see that you've got a guitar and an amplifier. Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to play music as soon as I get a chance, but I don't... I'm completely patient. This is important. Right on. Uh, anything else you want to add? Yeah, uh, I was recently attacked by the Ashton police. I have pictures of my bruises, and we're trying to take them to a lawsuit. We put a complaint against the officer that did it, <clears throat> and they provoked me in the back of the car. They told me that I was a waste of life <laughs> while I was cooperative. So eventually I lost my temper, but... Uh, they hogtied me, they beat me, took me to jail. What were, what were the charges they wanted to press on you? Oh, I had a misdemeanor warrant that I wasn't aware of. And uh, they were brutal. And I'm not against all the Ashland police. You know, I'm okay with Officers Hector, Carpenter, and um, I think there's a couple other ones, not very many. But uh, the other ones are just, they're very happy to chase around homeless people but not solve any crimes. And people that need help, the people that actually need help. What do you wish, uh, what change do you want to see in the police? What changed me seeing the police? What, what change do you want to see in the police? I'd like to see them actually make a difference. I don't know. You don't need to beat up homeless people. You don't need to gang up on them. You don't need to treat them like they're a waste of life. And you certainly need not to talk to a human being like that because no human being deserves to be talked to like that. So then what kind of change or uh, difference do you hope that they change into making? Less violence. I don't think they should be so allowed to just do that. They shouldn't be allowed to just hurt people. That's it. Less violence. Stop hurting people. It's that simple. Right on. And your name one more time? Daniel Cornett. Daniel, thanks very much for talking to us. Uh, we look forward to your music. Yeah. Oh, uh, so to begin, why don't you just introduce yourself? Okay, now my name is Robert, and I live in Talent, just up the road, and I'm 71 years old. Um, I basically just got turned on to this movement about three months ago. Um, I had been taking care of my wife, who was disabled for many, many years, and wasn't able to get out and be active at all because it was like a 24-7 job. Um, in May of this year, after 45 years, uh, she 
passed away peacefully in her sleep. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. But it was really like like a weight being lifted off both of our lives at the time. Um, because she was just at the point where her life was so bad physically and the future was so like grim for us um, that I don't know somehow she reached into the great field and manifested the perfect way out for all of us so the very next day I read about a march like this in Ashland and I felt my wife's presence so hard saying you know we're both free now go out and do what you need to do so the next day I was down there and I basically had every process I could find ever since wow that's quite so a story <laughs> and so then uh, what specifically brings you out here tonight um, support for all of the movement that's going on like in the Rogue Valley and in the entire southern Oregon area um, a lot of the protests in Medford lately have been really dicey, as you, you probably know. And so we started um, going to Hawthorne Park in Medford and feeding houseless community people. Just sort of an antidote to all of the hate and tension that was going on on the streets. And it has been like such an antidote to that man because the atmosphere down there is so great and I'm sure the same thing is going on you know here in Ashland but we're out there in Hawthorne Park every day um, and it's just it's such a positive thing so that's why I'm here <laughs> right on uh, so you referenced the sort of dicey protests in Medford are you referring to the one that was on June 1st where there were uh, some counter protesters present with uh, guns I'm referring to that one yeah <laughs> Yes, um, the one before that, the day before in, in uh, Cave Junction, I was at that one. That was kind of dicey, but the one in Medford the following night was, like, even worse. Um, I don't know how, if you were there or whether you... We were there on the June 1st. What happened, but but um, there was, like, no separation between the two sides, no police presence whatsoever, and it was, it was pretty fucking scary. And just the idea of that much hatred... Um, existing in our area it just it shocked me and just kind of blew me away and I was really pretty unprepared for that um, but just the idea of taking that energy and transforming it into you know doing something really positive is what really makes it all worthwhile but yeah the, the uh, Hatred and racism that was on display there that Sunday night in Medford was just amazing, man. It was just amazing. What do you think of the people who uh, come and counter-protest specifically with guns? Well, it makes me very, very uncomfortable, obviously. Um, we can move to the sidewalk, maybe. I have not the slightest clue why they feel the need to arm themselves when they're, like, confronting us. Because, like, at the police station they felt they needed to like protect the police station or something like if they weren't standing up there in their guns that we would rush the building and burn it down or some shit which is obviously the farthest farthest thing than from anybody's intention mm -hmm. but just the idea that they make the crossing that they can just stand there and show such hate and on the other hand, you know, myself and all of the people that were standing there with me that night, we were vastly outnumbered. We were obviously totally out, outgunned. Um, but the degree of moral superiority, I would call it, that our side was on display, and it's been the same exact way on every one of those protests, Rogue River, Cave Junction, Medford, um, it doesn't matter how many more people on the counter protester side there were. It was just there was just so much more obvious moral superiority, you know, on our side of the, of the street, and it was just on display. And I think that is like our our biggest weapon going forward. I mean, fuck the guns, really. It's 
they don't really scare me, to tell you the truth, at all. I mean, it, it scares me that something might get out of control and result in really tragic consequences, but it doesn't scare me personally anymore because you just, I don't believe that they can hurt me. I really don't. And so, the, uh, obviously, there's a lot of division in our country and here in our community as well right now. Do you see an antidote to any of that? I do. I see an antidote when Trump gets voted out of office. I think that uh, that is, I think that mo not most maybe, but a lot of the hate and I would even go so far as to call it Nazi behavior that we see is a personality cult. And I think it all centers around the president. I think he is like their Fuhrer. And I think that if he leaves in November, um, which is anybody's guess really at this point, but if that's what it turns out, I think that most of his rabid Nazi hate spewing followers are gonna go with him. And I think that's the point when we can really start the process, start the process of, you know, healing the country and healing the planet. I think that's what it takes. And I think that it really is centered around that. Cool. Well, thanks so much for talking to us, Robert. You're so welcome, man. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, thanks for talking to me. Is there anything else you want to do? Or? No, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh Say her name! Breonna Taylor! Say his name! Jacob Blake! Say her name! Breonna Taylor! Say his name! Jacob Blake! Say her name! Breonna Taylor! Say his name! Jacob Blake! Say her name! Breonna Taylor! coming out thank you everybody who showed up thank you everybody who didn't just put a sign in the front yard but those of you who are willing to back up my man Ming Pa I know a lot of people right now were jealous that a black man was leading this march you know who you are let the man speak black lives matter black lives matter homeless lives matter homeless lives matter children's lives matter Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Homeless lives matter. Homeless lives matter. Children's lives matter. Children's lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Homeless lives matter. Homeless lives matter. Just stop. Sorry. So amongst all the, all the uh, surrounding idiocies, we actually have some things to accomplish as a people and as a community. So let's stay focused. Because the fact is, you don't know if you're going to turn on the news tomorrow and somebody else will be dead. And you don't know who it's going to be. At this point, you don't even know what color they're going to be. The times are too crazy. We don't got time for no stupid distractions. What we got time for is coming together as a community. We got time for prayer. We got time to give this brother, Jacob Blake, our energy and pray for him to be able to recover. Because the fact of the matter is, he's in the hospital right now. This is not a joke. I'm glad everybody out here came because this is what it takes to make a community real. This is what it takes. 
coming out, talking to each other, seeing each other, and marching, even honking their horns at each other, even screaming out the windows in support. This is what it means. It's not a sideshow. There are no bench warmers. Everybody plays. Everybody's a part of it. Or else it doesn't happen. It's real. I appreciate everybody that came out tonight. Even though we started off for more. Everybody that can endure the walk. All the people who joined. Everybody clap. Everybody came who came. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to end with this prayer. Oh, my name is To give support to all the people who have passed away and to give support for Jacob Blake. And for all the people who need support in their life to realize the truth, wisdom, and compassion to come together and wake up. Om, hum with me. Mane pan me. Hum. Om. Mane pan me. Money pun me. Oh. 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 For Jacob Blake. Money pun me. Hum. Recover soon, brother. Oh. Money pun me. Hum. Recover soon, Jacob Blake. Oh. Money pun me, hum, om. Money pun me, hum, om. Money pun me, hum. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. All right, everybody, uh, find someone close to you and give them a hug. Hell yeah. Namaste. I hate all you. I ain't hugging you. All you, right here. Where? Oh, yeah. Right here. 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 Thank, Thank you, guys, so much, man. You're welcome. Go bunch of brainwashed cultural Marxists. Go home. Yeah, we're out of the way. Now. Do you even know what that means? So you were pretty involved. You were right at the head of this whole thing tonight. What did it all mean to you? Uh, first, I'd like to say Ming Pao was leading this march. I was backing him up. Um, what it meant to me was... You know, I'm a kid who grew up in the projects, and uh, my best friends, like all my all my girlfriends, all my best friends were black. You know, and that's not trying to like claim anything except for that I'm human enough to love people despite any differences. You know, like people make a big deal out of being rich. You know, when the big man comes to town, he's like the rich man, and his wallet's so big, right? And they talk about how his truck is so big. They talk about how his house is so big. Well, what about the size of your heart? What about the size of your soul? What about the size of your brain? You want to be a big man? Like, wake up, grow a heart. You know, there's a lot of white supremacists in this town, but there's no room for Nazis in Ashland. There's no room for racists in Ashland. We got more love than all of their hate. We won't tolerate it. We're not scared. And right now, one of the biggest problems we face are people are getting kicked out of their homes. And, you know, like, my family's struggling to stay inside. You know, everybody's in this together. And what we had tonight was people coming together to show each other love. I saw people of all backgrounds. I saw people protecting each other. And I wanted to stand by Ming Pa to let him know that at least he has one friend of a pale complexion who is willing to ride or die. Like I would put my life on the line for him. 
I'm not trying to blow him up. I'm not trying to wa like follow him blindly. I'm here to keep the peace. And if my status as an Iraq veteran did anything, it was to just show that I fear nothing. I am living on borrowed time. I should have died in the war. But since I'm here, and since I have a family now and a daughter, I'm worried about her future. I'm worried about Mingpa's future. I want to make sure that little black boys and little black girls can walk on these streets safe at night without being threatened, without feeling scared, without having to pull out their camera every time a white person approaches. That's got to change. So after this the has to change in your heart first, then in your home, then in the streets. So now that this protest tonight is ending, what's the next step from here? We're going to have a barbecue. We're going to have meals on wheels. We're going to feed the people, the houseless, the people who are living on the streets, but not them, anybody who's hungry. If you're hungry, come get a free lunch. Every day at 4.30 p.m. by the band shell in Lithia Park, there's some amazing people with really big hearts. I want to give a shout out to Jason and Vanessa who want to open up a kitchen at the Hardesty property. I want to give a, a shout out to all the people who are fighting to open that up as a place to occupy. The homeless need a safe place to go because pretty soon we could all lose our jobs. We could all be out on the streets. If you don't start fighting for the lives of homeless people right now, who's going to fight for your life? We got people like Jason and Vanessa who are out there feeding people. People like Julie Aikens who are out there feeding people, you know? And when you show up, we grow up together. So uh, what did you think of, I, I forget his name, but it was um, Mr. Carr, I can't remember. Um, Clarence. Clarence, Clarence Carr, um, what he had to say about Julie Aikens. What did you think of that? I thought it was amazing. I mean, Julie Aikens could say a lot of things. She's done a lot of things. But if we're going to trust her to put forth the policies that are going to protect us, she's got to start doing it. And, and much love goes out to Julie. Much love goes out to Leo. We got, you have our prayers, but we are gonna hold you accountable. So anytime that you put the stiff arm or you tell somebody to quiet down, we're gonna get louder. We're gonna support you in the city council and we'll support you as mayor if you support us. We know you need to take a break. You need to focus on the family right now, but there are many more marches. There are many more demonstrations. Don't be afraid to speak your heart, Julie. From a friend, never fear anything. We got you. We got your back. Get our back. Tobias Tilden, thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Sailor boys. <laughs> All right, Ming Pa, so you led this tonight. Um, how did you think it went? I think it went good. Yeah, I, I felt like it was going to be better. I thought it was going to be like 300 people because of what happened on Facebook. There was a lot of uh, dramatic stuff that happened. Um, Julie Aikens, uh, her, she was supposed to come and bring some people with her, but her uh, husband had a stroke. Um, the girl from um, South Oregon Racial Equity, um, her dog had to be brought into the emergency room. Um, there's some other things that happened with them that I'm not cool with, but I, I really get that uh, the emergency situation with Kayla's dog but it was just some other st it's just like I feel like it like things have happened but at the same time um, other people on the other hand have not been prepared you know like for the long haul and like I'm seeing now who's really ready to come out and who's like likes to uh, be into popular things like feds out of Portland we did it you know and People were like around, people were coming here. People were like becoming present with each other. And I don't know what happened with Rogue City. There's been some weird drama. I know when I was handing out flyers, people were like kind of nervous. Um, I would say like the older people, the younger people were like hi were happy about it. But the older people were like, is it gonna be like Rogue City and is this, you know? But every, anybody, I think 50 in their 50s or older seem to be like, kind of like, you know, because there's people like that in this community. It's, just, it's a like, probably like at least a third of the community. You know what I mean? And like, but the people who are younger around my age, I'm 40, people like around my age and younger were like really happy, you know? And so it's becoming almost an age thing and a class thing.
I feel that happening. But Ashland still has more positivity than negativity, so the marches are going to continue most likely. Cool. You know? And so what is uh, the next step from here? Um, the next step is to try to occupy land. Um, we're going to work on that next for the functional homeless. And also um, to chain, to make sure the ordinance 3189 doesn't get passed. And also to begin to expose the pedophilia and rapist behaviors in the neighborhood to bring it to a close. Call these people out call out some of the, the uh, police. Uh, I heard from people who spoke at Julie Aiken's um, gathering and some other things that there was a policeman named Carpenter that harasses the homeless constantly. So to um, put him in a situation to lose his job or get transferred or more, because I don't know everything about the situation. Um, I still have more to learn about it. But the homeless community really uh, and uh, other people um, outside the homeless community to support them really are talking about this guy. He's a big problem. And then um, Tony Sanchez uh, got harassed by the police last year. He was an actor for OSF, so we're trying to get him to speak. Um, there was a woman at OSF that, at four years ago. Someone drove by on a bike, a Caucasian man, and said he could kill her and be out of jail in two days because of sundown law. So we're going to try to get her to speak up at the next march. We're gonna keep uh, focusing on moving and solidifying Railroad Park, uh, possibly changing, changing its name to Black Panther Garden Park and really um, solidifying um, the change of the name Dead Indian Road and removing it forever from Oregon's history and from Oregon's present. Well, so that's what I gotta say, namaste. Namaste, Ming Pa, thanks for talking to us. Well, that was something else. We had a lot of really interesting conversations, captured some interesting conversations between people, and otherwise just sort of saw the sights and saw people demonstrate, stand up for what they believe in. Um, it's all been very interesting. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I've been Keegan Van Hook. This is us as we are, and I'll see you in the next one.